I've been testing four of the most talked about Linux distributions for the past few months, and honestly, the results surprise me. Everyone's asking the same question. Pop OS versus Linux Mint versus Ubuntu versus Fedora. Which one should you actually use? Let me break down what I discovered. Let's start with Pop! OS. This is System76's baby, and they've been making some bold moves lately. Pop! OS is essentially Ubuntu with a serious gaming and developer focus. What makes it stand out? The moment you boot it up, you'll notice the custom desktop environment. They've ditched standard GNOME for their own take on things, and honestly, it feels way more polished than vanilla Ubuntu. Here's what got my attention. Pop! OS comes with automatic tiling windows, which sounds geeky, but actually makes multitasking incredible. You can snap windows into perfect grids without thinking about it. If you're a developer or someone who juggles multiple applications, this feature alone might sell you. Plus, they've built in NVIDIA driver support that just works. No hunting for drivers, no terminal commands, it's all handled automatically. The biggest surprise? Pop! OS actually feels faster than Ubuntu on the same hardware. I'm talking about real-world performance, not benchmark numbers. Applications launch quicker, the system feels more responsive, and I rarely see that annoying lag you sometimes get with heavy desktop environments. But here's where it gets interesting. System76 just released their Cosmic Desktop Environment in Alpha. This is their complete break from GNOME built from scratch in Rust. It's ambitious, but right now it's still rough around the edges. If you're not comfortable with occasional bugs and missing features, stick with the stable version for now. The downside? Pop! OS is essentially a one-company show. While System76 is solid, you're betting on their long-term commitment. Also, because it's Ubuntu-based, you're still dealing with Ubuntu's sometimes frustrating package management decisions. Now let's talk about Linux Mint. This is the distribution that Windows users fall in love with instantly. Mint takes Ubuntu as its base, but strips away all the controversial stuff. No snap packages by default, no weird desktop experiments, just a clean, familiar interface that works exactly how you'd expect. I'll be straight with you. Mint is boring, and that's exactly why it's brilliant. The Cinnamon desktop environment looks and feels like Windows 7 had a baby with modern design principles. Your parents could use this without confusion. Everything is where you expect it to be, and nothing moves around between updates. What really impressed me was the stability. I've been running Mint on my secondary laptop for eight months, and I can count the number of issues on one hand. Updates don't break things, drivers work out of the box, and the software manager is actually pleasant to use. It's based on Ubuntu's long-term support releases, so you get five years of security updates without the headache of major version upgrades. The multimedia support is fantastic too. Mint includes all the codecs and drivers you need for music, videos, and streaming right out of the box. No hunting for additional packages or dealing with licensing issues. Here's the catch though. Mint is conservative by design. You won't get the latest and greatest software versions, and the desktop environment, while polished, lacks the modern touches you'll find in other distributions. If you want cutting-edge features or the newest applications, Mint might feel limiting. Let me tell you about Ubuntu. This is the elephant in the room, the distribution that made Linux mainstream. Ubuntu is backed by Canonical, which means professional support, regular updates, and a massive community. It's the safe choice, the one your IT department will approve, and the one most tutorials assume you're using. Ubuntu's strength is its predictable release cycle. Every six months, you get new features and updated packages. Every two years, you get a long-term support version that's rock solid for five years. This predictability is why servers and enterprises love Ubuntu. The default GNOME desktop is clean and modern, though it takes some getting used to if you're coming from Windows. The activities overview and workspace system are actually pretty clever once you adapt to them. Ubuntu also has the largest software repository and the best hardware support of any Linux distribution. But here's what nobody talks about. Ubuntu has been making some questionable decisions lately. Snap packages are pushed heavily, and they're slower than traditional packages. The Amazon integration controversy is behind them, but it showed Canonical's willingness to prioritize revenue over user experience. The user experience can be inconsistent too. Some applications are snaps, some are traditional packages, and some are flat packs. It's confusing for newcomers and annoying for experienced users. Plus, GNOME's design philosophy doesn't suit everyone. It's either love it or hate it. 
What surprised me most was how Ubuntu feels heavier than its derivatives. On older hardware, Mint or Pop! OS consistently perform better than vanilla Ubuntu, despite being based on the same foundation. Finally, let's discuss Fedora. This is Red Hat's community distribution, and it's for people who want the latest and greatest everything. Fedora is where new Linux technologies debut before they hit other distributions. It's bleeding edge in the best possible way. The standout feature is how current everything feels. Fedora ships with the newest kernel, the latest GNOME version, and updated packages across the board. If you're a developer or enthusiast who wants to experience the future of Linux today, Fedora delivers. I was impressed by the default security posture too. Fedora enables SE Linux by default uses modern file systems, and implements security features that other distributions often skip. It's like having a security expert configure your system. The package management with DNF is excellent. It's faster than apt, provides better dependency resolution, and the user experience is more polished. Fedora Workstation also includes excellent developer tools and has fantastic support for containers and virtualization. Here's where things get complicated. Fedora's rapid release cycle means major updates every six months and each version only gets about 13 months of support. You'll be upgrading frequently, and sometimes those upgrades break things. I've had perfectly working systems become unstable after major version updates. The learning curve is steeper too. Fedora assumes you know what you're doing. Configuration files are in different locations, package names are different, and troubleshooting guides often assume Debian-based systems. Also, Multimedia support is limited out of the box due to patent concerns. You'll need to enable third-party repositories for music and video codecs, which is an extra step that catches newcomers off guard. Let's be real about performance too. I tested all four on the same hardware, a five-year-old laptop with eight gigs of RAM. Pop! OS consistently felt the snappiest, especially for gaming and graphics work. Mint was rock solid, but not particularly fast. Ubuntu felt sluggish compared to its derivatives, which is honestly embarrassing. Fedora was fast, but occasionally stuttered during heavy multitasking, probably due to its aggressive resource management. The community aspect matters more than people realize. Ubuntu has the largest community, so finding help is easiest. Mint has an incredibly helpful and patient community, perfect for beginners. Papales has a smaller but passionate following, mostly developers and gamers. Fedora's community is more technical and assumes you know your way around Linux already. So here's my honest verdict. If you're a Windows user looking for the smoothest transition, Linux Mint is your best bet. It's stable, familiar, and just works without surprises. You'll be productive immediately and won't spend time fighting the system. If you're a developer or gamer who wants modern features and excellent hardware support, Pop! OS is fantastic. The custom desktop environment and development tools make it worth considering, especially if you have NVIDIA graphics. Ubuntu makes sense if you need enterprise support, predictable updates, or you're working in an environment where everyone else uses Ubuntu. It's the safe choice, but not necessarily the best choice for most users. Fedora is for enthusiasts and developers who want the latest features and don't mind the occasional rough edge. If you enjoy tinkering and want to see where Linux is heading, Fedora is exciting. My personal recommendation? Start with Linux Mint if you're new to Linux. It's the most forgiving and will give you a positive first experience. Once you're comfortable, you can always explore Pop! OS or Fedora later. If this helps you out, hit like and subscribe. I break down the most talked about tools side by side every week across finance, marketing, software, design, basically any niche you care about. Check out the latest comparison here or dive into the playlist if you're still deciding. But I'm curious, which one would you pick? Got a favorite? Drop it in the comments. I'm always curious what real users think. <laughs>